Hey, I'm Daniel. In the past three years, I have helped over 50 companies to save time and scale by improving and building their systems and automations. So why I tell you this? Because this has helped me to understand what is worth paying attention to when building those systems and what is a waste of time. And I wanna share it with you so you don't lose that time. Okay, so let's get into it. So these are the 10 main things that are the highest leverage things to focus on while building your systems in Notion, which is the app that I use for my clients. The first one, and what for me is one of the most important, is planning before building. And why is this? When I started, I just started to build everything in Notion, and then I figured out that I needed to do some changes, and I ended up using much more time. So now planning is something that I do at the beginning of every of my client projects and it consists on two parts first taking into account the requirements of the system that we are going to build i draw the database map that we are going to be building in notion and this we can do on paper or in my case i do it on a super note which is a e-ink tablet in fact let me show you because i have it here so here we can see how I have built all these database maps for, for one client. And exactly, this is what I do in the beginning of each project. I like to do it in this e-ink tablet because I can move stuff around and I can not do that with, with paper. But, but yeah, this is how, how I start every project and how I recommend everybody to start a project. And the second thing that I plan is the workspace structure. So this is uh, how the sidebar is going to look like, which pages are gonna be inside of that sidebar. But I plan all of this in advance. And for example, this is what I did for one of my latest projects. And it's basically just a group of bullet points. So it's, it's nothing very fancy, but this helps me a lot to move things around before I even get to building it in Notion. The second thing to take into account is that databases are better than pages. I believe people tend to use pages and just drop some text in there because a lot of productivity apps are not database based. So we're just used to that. But one of the powerful features of Notion is the power of databases. And then I just see pages as places to create linked databases. So those views are contextual to the page. We will talk more about that later, but here is an example. This is a simple page to track the KPIs of a random company. And this is a linked view of a database. And I'm just showing the active KPIs because this is the page where we are gonna come just to see the KPIs. But what would have happened if I would have just written this in, in simple text here or in a table like so, uh, says, that this will just be visible in this page. I cannot embed it in any other page. For example, if we are having a meeting about the KPIs, I cannot create a template and bring this data over there because this just lives here. So it's kind of useless and kind of isolated. So that's why I always prompt everyone to use databases instead. Okay, and now that we are talking about databases, the third tip is to have a databases page, for example, this one over here. And there are multiple reasons for this. First one, this helps us to see all the databases that are powering the whole workspace. So we can have this bird's eye view. Second, if we wanna restrict the access to some of the data that is within the workspace, it is super easy to locate what we wanna give access to somewhere or not because all the data that is important is inside of this page. So we don't have to find it throughout the whole workspace. And third, since nobody is ever going to come to this page, we can even hide it, uh, there is a very low risk of people deleting any database by accident because they're all going to be using linked databases that if they delete, nothing happens. Just the linked database is deleted, but the data is still in the system. Fourth tip, aesthetics matter a lot. Okay, imagine that you walk in a store. It's cozy. You like the music. The lighting is warm. Everything is orderly. So you may want to enter and maybe even buy something, right? But now look at the opposite. You see a store with all this hospital white lighting, with all the clothes, without any order falling on the floor. You will never enter there, right? So same applies to Notion workspaces. If we don't care how the workspace looks, people are not really going to enjoy using it. We are gonna talk about usability in the eighth or ninth point, but this is critical. So I always spend extra time for example, in this dashboard, to make it look a little bit nicer with some colors, with some callouts and, and everything. And even if we may feel that we are losing our time, we're actually making it more usable for everybody in our team, which is going to increase the adoption of the tool. And by the way, if you wanna learn how to make Notion more aesthetic, I have a video already in this channel that I have created that you can find over here, where I show you some tips on how to do that. Now, tip number five, useless things hurt. What do I mean by this? If you've been using Notion for a while, you know what I'm gonna be talking about. Let's say that you have a dashboard 
And you know that like a group of pages here on the right that they are there, you don't know why they are there, you never use them, but they're still there because you don't wanna go through the mental effort of understanding where should I place them? Should I delete them? And it's like, okay, fuck it, like next day I'm gonna do it. But they're always there. They're a constant reminder of something that you need to sort, but you haven't. It's like when, when we have dirty clothes on the floor. They are always a constant reminder, hey, you have to clean me, you have to clean me. And you feel a little bit bad about yourself. So for me here, the fix for this will be to conduct a monthly or a quarterly Notion audit. So this is basically go through all the pages inside of the workspace. I mean, not inside of the pages in the databases, but all the pages in the workspace and audit what we are using and what we are not using. And if we're working in a company and we are not sure if other people are using it, we can always go to the view updates icon and see the analytics who has been the latest person that has used this page. And if nobody has used it for the past couple of months, and maybe nobody is using it and we can archive it. The sixth tip is accepting that Notion is not the only app. Okay, when I started using Notion, it's like I saw the light, like I don't need any other app anymore. And I was trying to force Notion to do everything. It is true that Notion is going to help us substitute most of our tech stack, but we don't have to force it to do everything because there may be some standard on apps that are better suited for whatever we want to do. For example, I always give that this example. I built a workout tracker. In fact, I have the video in, in this channel and I built it in Notion, but it was a little bit cumbersome to use because Notion is not really made for that. So I ended up just using an iPhone app that is just for tracking workouts and that works so much better. So do I consider this as a Notion failure? No, I don't. But I say this just so you don't try to make Notion do things that Notion is not supposed to be doing. Again, this is going to save us a lot of time. <laughs> then the seventh thing to take into account, the less properties, the better. And I mean this in the database context. And why do I say this? The more properties that we use in a database, the more maintenance this database is going to need, which means the higher chances of everybody fucking the system up by forgetting to input some critical data in some critical property so that doesn't show in some critical filter and then we start to lose things. So what do I do every time that one of my clients tells me, hey, I wanna add a property to tag the area of the task. I always say the same. I don't have the, the absolute truth. I always ask, what do you want it for? And if he tells me, well, because I mean, it's just useful, it's, it's like metadata. It helps me to know uh, what this task belongs to. Okay, but how are you gonna use it? Um, well, no, really, I'm not gonna really use, use it for anything else. So then we don't add it. If he tells me that he wants to have like several dashboards for his, uh, for his company with the several departments and everything, and then this is gonna be the way to show those tasks in each of these dashboards, then it's fine. But if there is no real use, we are not gonna add an extra property, an extra step for every task that we add into the system. So yes, always double think all the properties that you include inside of your system. And if you are not sure if you're gonna use it, don't add it. Then another thing that I have seen a lot of people do is yes, we are very aware of the properties that we create when we are creating the system. But then when we start running the system, our team members may create some extra properties that they need, a typical comment property just to jot some notes there. But then another person comes and he creates a date property for whatever reason and then we start having a lot of ghost properties that nobody ever uses and this creates a lot of chaos. So what I always tell people to do, so we can go to the database itself and only give people the can edit content access. Because like this, they will be able to use the database, but not to change the structure, not to add any new properties. And just the so-called Notion champion of the workspace or the company will be able to actually edit the content of the database. So if people really want to add an extra property, they will have to contact that person and that person is going to audit and decide whether this property makes sense or not. The eighth tip, all in dashboards does not work. I understand that the idea of having everything in one place is very sexy, very enticing, but do not do it. Oh, but I can see all my finances, all the tasks that I need to do in the next 49 hours, all the meetings that I need in the next 37 days, plus all my finances, like the recipes that I'm gonna cook the next week, all the friends with their scores, 
my next workout all in the same page. This just doesn't work, at least for me and for the people that I have worked with. This is unfocusing as hell. Having everything on one page is just going to lose your focus. You will have to scroll to get to data. You are going to see like multiple things. So maybe you are going to get sidetracked. You're going to start thinking about a different thing. It just doesn't work. So what to do instead? I always build single purpose pages. So this means one page have one only purpose. I'm just going to go to this page to check on my KPIs, for example. So here you have it. The only thing that I have in this page is KPIs. Another thing that we can do is to have like a single purpose page, communications in this case, but then single purpose views inside of it. So upcoming meetings, the only thing that I see here is the upcoming meetings. I mean, I don't have any because this is a sample. The latest meetings, just the latest meetings. But again, single purpose. Do not use one page for more than one purpose. Or if you do, don't use one database view for more than one purpose. The ninth is focusing on employee adoption. Imagine you spend a lot of time or you pay someone and spend a lot of money building a Notion workspace and then you roll it out to your team and your team don't really like it and they want to keep using Asana or Todoist or whatever. So you have just lost a lot of time and a lot of money. Why? Because you didn't really care about the adoption of the system that you were creating. So how can we increase adoption? First of all, creating the simplest system possible. I have already talked about this, not many properties, not many databases, not many anything, just the simplest way, easy workflows, easy everything. Second, using informative callouts on what to you do or how to use the page that the user is in, or even better, video walkthroughs. Here is a video of me explaining how to use this page. So like this, people will really understand how to use it. Third one is making it easy for the employees to share feedback with you. You may build a form with feedback or you may have like weekly check-ins with them until you understand that the system has full adoption. But this is super important. Take them into account. And finally, giving each of the employees of the company a personal dashboard that they can modify however they want. This is also super useful because this is going to be their home within the workspace. Yeah, and I have seen this help a lot with adoption. And finally, I have left the sexiest for the end is automation. And why is this one in the end? Because it is actually the last thing that we need to do in a workspace. I know it's very sexy to automate stuff. I have seen so many people start automating processes even before they have actually tried them with a customer or with their service that they're providing, whatever. But building automations take a little bit of time. So imagine that you create all this automation and then you realize that the process that you are automating is not really the one that you are going to be following. So you have just lost all the time that you have gained by using the automation. So what's the fix for this? We automate only the processes that we know they work because we have done them manually before many times. I mean, with many times, I mean, maybe three times, four times. So we know that they are stable. So once we reach this point, then we automate the heck out of it. And if you want to continue the automation route and you want to see how you can automate almost everything in your business, I have an automation playlist that is going to appear around here so you can follow on this journey of automating everything. That is it for today, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.